Lower gastrointestinal bleeding is a common reason for hospital admissions and contributes significantly to hospital morbidity and mortality. Lower GI bleed differs from upper GI bleed in terms of epidemiology, management, and prognosis. But first, let's define a lower GI bleeding. Lower GI bleeding is defined as blood loss originating from a site distal to the ligament of trites. It is suspected if the patient presents with hematochesia, which is a passage of maroon or bright red blood or blood clots per rectum. It is a common cause of hospital admission, but not as common as an upper GI bleeding. The causes of a lower GI bleed can be grouped into several categories. Anatomic, such as diverticulosis. Vascular, such as angiodysplasia, ischemic ideologies, and radiation-induced. Neoplasms, and inflammatory. Inflammatory can further be divided into infectious, and non-infectious. Infectious causes are salmonella and shigella, and non-infectious causes include Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. In general, anatomic causes and vascular causes present with painless lower GI bleed compared to an inflammatory cause, which is more of a pain, abdominal pain, with diarrhea. What is the common source of a lower GI bleed? It's diverticulosis, causing a diverticular bleed. Diverticular bleeding is painless and commonly stops spontaneously without any type of interventions. The bleeding is arterial in origin, therefore is associated with a massive GI bleed. What is a massive GI bleed? A massive Lower GI bleeding is a life-threatening condition in which the patient presents with a systolic blood pressure below 90 and a hemoglobin of less than 6. What condition is related to a lower GI bleeding and is commonly seen in elderly patients and patients on anticoagulation therapy? This condition is called angiodysplasia. Angiodysplasia refers to dilated, tortuous submucosal vessels. The bleeding in this case is venous in origin, and therefore angiodysplasia tends to cause more of a slow but repeated bleeding episodes. In this condition, the patient may present with a guaiac positive stool, iron deficiency anemia, or syncope. What is the most common cause of a minor lower GI bleed in patients less than 50? The most common cause is a hemorrhoidal bleeding. It is described as a small amount of bright red blood without associated hemodynamic instability or significant blood volume loss. In infectious colitis, the patient presents with abdominal pain, with fever and diarrhea, and only a mild lower GI bleed. The specific cause can only be determined by obtaining a stool culture. This type of colitis is described by a moderate left-sided cramping abdominal pain, followed by bloody diarrhea in a patient who is hypotensive, such as septic shock. This type of colitis is called ischemic colitis. Colonoscopy may show sharply demarcated pale mucosa with petechial bleeding. What is the primary treatment for ischemic colitis? Treatment is mainly supportive care with normalization of the blood pressure either by giving IV fluids or starting the patient on pressors. What are the possible clinical presentations of a lower GI bleed? Maroon stool is commonly associated with a lower GI bleed from the right side of the colon, compared to a bright red blood per rectum, which is commonly associated with a lower GI bleed from the left side of the colon. Melana is commonly associated with a cecal bleed. 
patient assessment and hemodynamic resuscitation should be performed simultaneously in a patient with a lower GI bleeding. The questions to ask yourself during the initial evaluation includes, is this a first or a recurrent episode of a GI bleeding? Does the patient have any prior history of peptic ulcer disease, cirrhosis, coagulopathy, or inflammatory bowel disease? Is the patient taking NSAIDs, antiplatelets, or anticoagulations? In patients with a history of cancer, is there a history of radiation therapy or chemotherapy? Vital signs should be assessed for severity of hypovolemia. Resting tachycardia is associated with mild to moderate hypovolemia. Orthostatic hypotension is associated with blood volume loss of at least 15%. And supine hypotension is associated with a blood volume loss of at least 40%. Now let's talk about lab findings related to a lower GI bleeding. A patient with acute lower GI bleeding should have a normocytic red blood cells. A patient with a more chronic lower GI bleed, they typically have CBC showing microcytic red blood cells or results relating to iron deficiency anemia. Unlike an acute upper GI bleeding, a lower GI bleed with normal renal perfusion should have a BUN to creatinine ratio of less than 20. As far as management, the first step to ask is, is the patient hemodynamically stable? Determining a patient's hemodynamic stability is top priority, and IV fluids can be used to achieve this goal, such as IV normal saline or lactated ringer solution. What about blood transfusion? A patient who is hemodynamically stable without comorbid illnesses may not require blood transfusion until the hemoglobin falls below what level? The hemoglobin level should be less than 7. In older patients with severe comorbid conditions such as acute coronary syndrome, blood transfusion is ordered if the hemoglobin level is below what level? hemoglobin level of less than 9. In context of active bleeding, when should blood transfusion be considered? If a patient is actively bleeding, blood transfusion is recommended regardless of the current hemoglobin level. What platelet count level requires platelet transfusion? Transfuse platelet to maintain a platelet count of at least 50,000 if the patient has an active lower GI bleeding. Make sure to hold the medications that are known to cause a GI bleed, and this includes antiplatelets, such as aspirin and clopidogrel, and anticoagulants, and consider the need for reversing anticoagulation. What should be considered in patients on direct-acting anticoagulants who present with life-threatening lower GI bleeding and do not respond to initial resuscitation? If reversal agents are needed, consider the following. Either resistizumab for dabigatrin, adaxinet alpha for apixaban, and rivaroxaban. What should be considered in patients on warfarin with life-threatening lower GI bleeding in an INR of more than 2.5? four-factor prothrombin complex concentrate, or PCC. What if PCC is not available? What is the next best option? Fresh frozen plasma. What is the diagnostic test of choice for hemodynamically stable patients with a lower GI bleeding? The answer is colonoscopy. Colonoscopy can identify a source of a lower GI bleeding in two-thirds of patients. It should be performed within 24 hours, but it requires an adequate preparation. A 45-year-old male patient presents to the ER with one episode of bright red blood per rectum at home. His blood pressure is 120 over 70 and a resting pulse rate of 80. The initial hemoglobin is 9. What is the most appropriate next step? 
upper endoscopy, colonoscopy, angiography, or capsule endoscopy. Colonoscopy is the recommended initial diagnostic test in patient who presents with hematochesia and hemodynamically stable. 45-year-old male presents to the ER with two episodes of maroon-colored bloody stool. He admits taking ibuprofen for chronic low back pain. His blood pressure is 90 over 60 with a resting pulse rate of 120. Rectal examination shows maroon colored stool. The initial hemoglobin is 9, but decreased to 7. What is the most appropriate next step to perform? Upper endoscopy, colonoscopy, angiography, or capsule endoscopy? The right answer is upper endoscopy. This patient presents with hematochesia associated with unstable hemodynamics. An upper endoscopy is the most appropriate diagnostic test to evaluate an upper GI source. It likely has an NSAID-induced peptic ulcer disease. Colonoscopy requires a bowel preparation and is indicated if the patient is not hemodynamically unstable. Angiography or capsule endoscopy are recommended if the source of the lower GI bleed is not found on an upper or lower endoscopy. Patients with a small bowel bleeding often have normal upper endoscopy and colonoscopy results. What is the most common cause of small bowel bleeding? It's angiodysplasia and is often seen in elderly patients. What is the standard of care to evaluate a GI bleed of the small intestine? The answer is capsule endoscopy. Capsule endoscopy was FDA approved in 2001. The patient swallows a capsule and it goes down the whole entire GI tract. The capsule takes 3D pictures, especially of the small intestines, which is an area not seen from an upper endoscopy and a colonoscopy. If there's an active bleed found from a capsule endoscopy, what is the latest procedure that is performed to visualize the entire small bowel? The procedure is called a double balloon enteroscopy. The abnormalities found at capsule endoscopy are investigated by performing a double balloon enteroscopy since it can obtain biopsies as well as perform treatments such as cauterization that a capsule endoscopy cannot do. A 65-year-old male patient was referred to your clinic for a newly diagnosed iron deficiency anemia and a positive fecal occult blood test. For the past six months, he has undergone an upper endoscopy and a colonoscopy with normal results. What is the most appropriate next step? The most appropriate test is to order a capsule endoscopy. The next step is to evaluate for a potential small bowel bleeding. It is a non-invasive procedure and can visualize the entire small bowel. Now let's do some rapid fire questions. Where is the source of the bleeding if it is a lower GI bleed? The source of a lower GI bleed is distal to the ligament of the trites, usually in the colon. What is the most common source of a lower GI bleeding? Diverticulosis causing a diverticular bleeding. What is a common feature of a lower GI bleed? Hematochesia which is passage of bright red blood through the anus. True or false, both melanin and hematochesia can be caused by either an upper GI bleed or a lower GI bleed. True. True or false, an elevated BUN to creatinine ratio of more than 30 in a patient with hematochesia suggests a lower GI bleeding. False. A BUN to creatinine ratio of more than 30 in a patient with hematochesia suggests a brisk upper GI bleeding and not a lower GI bleed. What is the hemoglobin level to transfuse in a patient with stable lower GI bleed? We use the restrictive transfusion strategy. We transfuse PAC RBCs if the hemoglobin is below 7. 
what is the reversal agent for dabigatran? Either resistizumab. What is the reversal agent for apixaban and rivaroxaban? Adaxanet alpha. In a hemodynamically stable patient with a lower GI bleed, what is the preferred initial diagnostic test? First line is colonoscopy after a bowel prep. What is the next recommended test if colonoscopy yields negative results in a patient hemodynamically stable with a lower GI bleed? Upper endoscopy to look for a brisk upper GI source. What is the primary diagnostic test for evaluating the small bowel following a normal endoscopy and colonoscopy in patients presenting with lower GI bleeding? Capsule endoscopy. In a patient exhibiting hemodynamic instability despite fluid resuscitation and suspected of a lower GI bleeding, what is the preferred diagnostic test CT and geography. All right, thank you for tuning in. If you find this very valuable, please consider subscribing for more high yield content that can assist you in preparing for your internal medicine shelf exam and Step 2 CK. Keep in mind that the USMLE Step 2 CK comprises of at least 50% of internal medicine related questions, and scoring well on this exam is crucial when applying for residency program since step one is now a pass or fail.